Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the dial peers which we will create on the gateway. We can create dial peers in case of fest 323 in case of SAP or in case of MGCP fallback as well. So this is mainly required to send the call outside from your gateway if your UCM is not there. like in S323 case, that is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. If something is not configured on the CUCM, then it should route everything or every call via gateway as well. So we will configure so many things on these dial peers on the gate. So let's start it. What are dial peers? What are the types of dial peers? And how can we configure it? So this is the actually the lab network setup. Here you can see uh, we have two ports. One here you can see this is your cube. You have two ports. This is gig zero slash zero, and there is gig zero slash one. We can say this is the uh, this port is it connected with the internal network, and this port where you can see this is the firewall. It is connected with the external network that is service provider IP network. That's why we are just calling it as a WAN, and we are calling this port this interface as a LAN. So mainly this CUCM is connected on this interface like the trunk is connected. There will be a trunk between the CUCM and the cube. So we will give the IP address of the cube in that particular trunk. I will show you we will create the trunk as well between this CUCM and the cube so that it will reach uh, like all the route patterns. We will point it out to the cube. Let's discuss about this in detail. What are the LAN or WAN dial peers? So here you can see this is our the same thing like on-prem collab deployment. This is enterprise LAN. This is WAN. Here you can see this everything is under the LAN like unified CUCM. The IP address is this one 10.10.1.20, and this is the gig zero slash zero 10.10.1.20. One. This is our internal network. And if we talk about this one, gig zero slash one, you can see here the IP address is this one. And here you can see this blue. This should be the, this is the, uh, we can say the SIP network, uh, like we can say the SIP connectivity. And if we talk about this uh, red one, this is S323. And if there is a, uh, we can say media interchange between the this particular device or this device with this particular PSTN phone, that would be this white highlights. So that would be an RTP stream established between this one. So here in this, uh, in, in your cube, uh, in your cube, there is, there will be no TDM backup in your cube. That's the main, or we can say the first thing you should remember. Next, let's discuss how we can create the uh, SIP trunk between the CUCM and the Unity. Because you need to create a trunk only then you will be able to reach out to your cube. You can see, we just create the SIP trunk, cube, SIP trunk, SIP trunk to cube. This will be our description. And you can give all the things like device pool and all other things like MTP required or not and retry video call as audio. That depends on your configuration, whether you need it or not so what we need to do we need to configure cucm to route all pstn calls to cube via a sip trunk if you remember in the previous slides i was talking about gig 0 slash 0 which is connected with our internal network that interface is connected with our internal network so what it's saying we need to configure the cucm to route all pstn calls means all route patterns should be routed to the to this particular SIP trunk. We need to make sure all different patterns of calls, uh, either it could be a lo local call, it could be a long distance, international emergency calls, or any informational calls, all should be pointing it out to the queue. So only then it will reach out to that cubes gig zero slash zero interface. And then it will route it to the another interface, which is on the service provider side. So let's discuss how we can, uh, how we can make our gateway as a cube actually. So what you need to do, you need to put these commands voice service swipe on your gateway and then 
you will put this command mode border element that means now you are using your gateway as a cube and this license capacity 20 this is required mainly for the smart licensing and then we have this thing that is allow connections SIP to SIP. What it means, so if any call is coming from your CUCM, like this is your CUCM. Okay, let's just say this is your cube and this is your CUCM. If any call is coming from CUCM to cube, so it will come to the gig 0 slash 0 interface. And then we have gig 0 slash 1 interface here as well. And here we have a PSTN provider or we can say IT service provider, which is using SIP, then it will just send that call, that particular call to that ITSP, that IT service provider. Now, this call is coming from CUCM to cube is SIP. That is a VoIP lag. And then to allow that particular SIP call to go to the outside, like we can say outbound call lag, we need to use this command. If we are not using this command, it will not allow. As you can see, by default, voice devices do not allow an incoming VoIP lag to go out as a VoIP. This is incoming <clears throat> and this is outgoing. So it will not allow this if you are not using this command. That is allow connections, SIP to SIP. Then we have <clears throat> three things that is voice services, VoIP, this command, that's what we you are using earlier and you will make it as a SIP like you are using a SIP protocol and then you can you, you can use this command that is early offer force it means every call which is going out from this gateway it should go as an early offer and what early offer means early offer means you are sending your media capabilities in your initial invite you are not waiting from you are not waiting for your uh, destinations party to send you the media capabilities like sdp that means your codex and all other details say early offer force means the calling party will send everything will calling party will send sdp messages which contains uh, whether this is an audio call video call or a port number and the codec details as well this was the second step then you have the next thing that is third thing what you need to do in that third thing, you need to create a trusted list of IP address to prevent toll fraud. Trusted list means uh, you know who is your service provider, you know who is your CUCM. Then what you need to do, you just need to enter the IP addresses of CUCM and the SIP trunk service provider. Like this command you already used, then IP address trusted list, and then you will use this commands IPv4 66.77.37.2. This is just an example. This will be your IT SIP trunk service providers, uh, SPCs IP, and this IP would be your CUCM and then SIP. What it's saying, IP address trusted list, applications initiating signaling towards cube. That is like, for example, CUCM or CVP. So IP addresses from dial peers with session target IP or server group are trusted by default and need not to be populated here. So uh any ip which we are using in the session target ip or the server group it should be trusted by default if it's not then you can you can actually add it here like we just added ip address trusted list then let's discuss about the land dial peers and the van dial peers like how we can create it lan and van means you can create VoIP and ports mainly lan and when we are using because you can, you know, like gig zero slash zero, this is connected with the internal network. That's why we are calling it as a LAN dial peer. And gig zero slash one is at the, uh, is at this interface, which is connected with the IT service provider, that is PSTN. That's why we are calling it as a WAN dial peers. So what is dial peer? Dial peer is like normal static routing table, which is mapping phone numbers to interfaces or IP addresses. So it is just mapping. Uh, the numbers to this particular interface. Now, what is LAN dial peer and what is LAN dial peer? Uh, I already discussed, but let's just uh, read out this definition. LAN dial peers, dial peers that are facing towards the IP PBX for sending and receiving call legs to and from the PBX. So, dial peers which are facing towards IP PBX, this is the IP PBX hour, and 
this is facing towards this one it is mainly used for sending and receiving sending if something is sending from cucm to this cube and receiving means if something is receiving from the cube this is like something is receiving from the cucm something is sending from cube that's why it is written for sending and receiving call legs to and from the pbx so to the pbx it is sending the call from the pbx it is receiving the call and you need to always bind a lan interface on cube to lan dial pairs and ensuring that sip is sourced from the intended lan interface means sip is like working on this interface only on the lan side if we talk about the van dial pairs the working is same these dial pairs are just facing towards sip trunk provider and these are used for the same thing that is sending and receiving calls to and from itsp in the lan the calls sending and receiving calls selects to and from pbx and in this gig 0 slash 1 it is sending and receiving calls to and from this its your sip service provider and you need to bind the wan interface ip to this wan dial pair in the lan you are binding lan interface ip and in the wan you are binding wan interface ip so now let's discuss about the two types of dial pairs that is voip and ports like in which case we need to create voip dial pairs and in which cases we need to uh, create the port style pairs so there are two different types of dial pairs we are configuring dial pairs so port style pair are mainly used to define voice reachability information for any traditional connection and voip dial pair is mainly used to define any voice connection available through ip addressing that means let's discuss this is your cucm and this is your cube or i can say any cube or we can say normal gateway as well and this is your pst and it can be your itsp like who is giving you who is providing you the accessibility for sip so let's say we have three things that is cube or gateway cm and pst and provide so if you are sending a call from sip to your cube or gateway that would be your voip dial pair why because you are using everything as an ip everything is connected through ip that's why we are using voip dial pair and when should we use port style pair like if you have your tdm line like if you have your pri lines which are connected on the gateway and your gateway is connected with that pst and provider that means we are mixing the network that means this is the ip network this is the pstn network so if you want to create dial ps on this gateway where you have the pri terminated and you know that we have a pstn provider which is not supporting the sip then we will create the port style peer here as in this on this interface i can see so ip to ip we will create voip dial peer or ip to pst and normal provider not the sip provider we will create the port style so let's take an examples how we can create these voip and port style peers let's start with the port style peer first oh before that yes let's discuss about the dial peer wild cards like uh, we will use the dial peers in the destination pattern or uh, not not the dial peers actually the wild cards in the destination pattern we will use the uh uh wild cards in the proper we can say in the incoming call as well on the destination pattern as well on the incoming call as well so what do you mean by these wild cards actually so if we are using this dot that means it will match any digit like if you are if you are saying incoming call number dot dot means any number of digits or any digit what this plus means plus matches one or more instances of the preceding digits brackets now brackets matches a range of digits like you are using this bracket and if you are saying 1 2 6 that means it is matching a range 1 2 3 1 or 2 or 3 or 5 or 6 or 4 so only one digit will match 
between these one to six. T means it matches any dialed number from zero to thirty-two digits. Like if you are saying destination pattern nine T. So if you are pressing a nine first and then n number of like n not n number, I can say the maximum of thirty-two digits you can enter if you are using this nine T. Then we have this caret that is a. Uh, I can say this particular sign. It says it doesn't match. So if you are using it under this particular brackets, so if you are saying under this bracket, if we are choosing this one, one through three, that means except one or two or three, it will match everything, right? If this is under bracket, that means it will match except these this range one or two or three. If you are using this caret uh, explicitly, like we can say nine zero one one like this and dot 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 dot, that means this means number is starting with this one, so it should match. That means our number is starting with this. If you are not using this one and you are just entering this number nine zero one one, then you need to use that particular command that is forward digits all, forward digits all, or we can say forward digits five, forward digits seven, forward digits nine. That depends on your configuration. Then we have this thing that is comma. It inserts a one second pause between dial digits. So let's take an examples of these wild cards. So if we have written here like this five 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 brackets one two three and dot dot dot. What it means? It's matching five 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 and any number between one or two or three and three any other three digits. That is five 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 one and it can be any other three five 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 two five 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 three and then any number on the last three digits. As it is as it is written, where dot 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 is any three digits. If you are using this five plus two three, what plus means it matches one or more instances of the preceding digits. So now what it's saying five five two three as well, five 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 two three as well, and five 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 two three as well. It can match one or more instances of the preceding digits. This one, so you can either match five, either match five five, either match five 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 or five 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 any number. Then you have this example one four hyphen six and five five five. That means it is it is matching five 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 for sure. But it will match one number between this. That means either it will match one or it will match four or five or six. It will not match through two or three. It will only match one four five and six. That matches one triple five four triple five five triple five and the six triple five. Then we have this example that is five 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 nine one two. That means it is matching either five or nine, and it is matching all the four digits. Like five five one or two, it will match. But between this five or nine, it will match only one five or nine. If we have five hyphen nine, that means it will match either five or six or seven or eight or nine. Then we have the next one, that is this caret. One two seven dot dot and one three five. That means if it is under the bracket, that means it will not allow anything under these one two seven. It will match eight nine zero anything, but it will not match through one two seven. That means it is matching eight then dot dot any number then either one or three or five. Or if it is matching nine, then either one or three or five. It will match anything. Where is any? Two digits dot dot. Actually, this dot dot is any two digits. So now let's discuss about few examples like how we can configure these dial pairs. Let's start with the port style pairs. This is just the uh, everything like all the digit manipulations how we can use it. Like this one. This is caret. It matches the expression at the start of line. And if it is under this bracket, that means do not match a single character specified in that particular list. This dollar sign it matches the expression at the end of line. This ex uh, we can say the forward mark and the backslash it delimiter. It is a delimiter actually that marks the start and end of both matching and replacement string. 
we will use these strings in the voice translation rules actually we are not covering that voice translation rules here so you can ignore this one hyphen means that is indicating a uh, i can say the range list it will match a single character like if we are saying one and five or one five or six under this bracket it means it will match either one or five or six dot means matches any single character star means repeat the previous regular expression zero or more times and plus means repeat the previous regular expression one or more times that is one or more times and this star is zero or more times actually this question mark it repeats the previous regular expression zero or one time zero that is groups regular expressions now we have this port style pair thing so how we can configure the port style pair mainly we will use it on the side which is connected with the pstn provider that is our where where our we can say our pri is terminated on the gateway we will create the dial pairs on that particular interface so if you are creating a port style pairs now then what you need to do the first command would be this one dial pair voice any random number and then ports this is not necessary that it could be 2000 it can be any number it can be 1 200 1000 10000 any number so you are creating a port style pair <clears throat> first you need to enter dial pair voice any number and then the ports if you are making a port style if you are making a voip dial pair then you will use the voip pair then the next command would be you need to use that is destination pattern two dot 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 what it means two dot dot means it will match the pattern starting from two zero 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 till two nine 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 dot 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 means any number between zero to nine it is saying non-digit strip don't strip any digits and then it is mentioned the port from where like this is the interface port one slash zero 23 is your signaling so you need to mention the port as well where your pri is terminated this is just an example i will let you know how we can uh, create it in our i can say the production environment i will show you in my uh, notepad i have written few of these uh, examples of the dial peers so this will be the next dial peer if you want to create the ports one so it is saying dial peer voice 297 ports this is again random number destination pattern 90 then brackets 2 to 5 that means it will match 902 and then again six numbers or 903 904 905 and then these six digits numbers right and it is saying incoming called number dot as well that means we just mixed outbound as well as inbound we can say outgoing as well as incoming dial pair here so this would be used destination pattern would be used for the outbound dial pair and this incoming call number would be used for the incoming dial pairs so we just added these two dial pairs here direct inward dial and then we have forward digit seven why are we using direct inward dial as we are using incoming called number here and then we have forward digits seven seven that means starting from the last one two three four five six and then seven that means it will forward only seven digits to the provider to the service provider it will strip off this nine and zero and then on which port it is like configured port zero slash zero slash zero twenty three then we have another example that is for the dial pair voice 12 ports destination pattern 9 0 1 2 9 and then 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 8 9 so these are the 9 10 11 12 13 14 there are the 14 numbers so no brackets and all it's just 9 0 1 2 9 and then these dot dot again incoming call number dot incoming call number dot means it will accept everything incoming call numbers means acceptance it will occur it will accept and dot means it will accept everything we have direct inward dial and then main thing we have that is forward digits 12 what this forward digits 12 means starting from the last it will forward those 12 digits only like 3 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व मीन्स इट विल फॉरवर्ड दिस वन टू फ्रॉम वन टू नाइन एंड ऑल अदर डिजिट टू द प्रोवाइडर इट विल स्ट्रिप ऑफ दिस नाइन एंड जीरो राइट एंड देन वी हैव दिस थिंग दैट इज पोर्ट जीरो स्लैश जीरो स्लैश वन लाइक ऑन विच पोर्ट अवर पी आर आई और वी कैन से द गेट वे इज टर्मिनेटेड दिस इज द मेन थिंग लाइक वे आर वी आर कंफिगरिंग दीज डायल पी एल so now let's discuss about the voip dial peers so this is the voip dial peer configuring voip dial peer we are using now you can see it is written dial peer voice 100 voip dial peer is the same command voice is same and then this is the random any number and then voip now we are using the voip dial we are creating we are configuring the voip dial peer and where we are configuring where there is a an ip to ip connectivity mainly you can you can easily see if you are using an h323 or you are using a, a pri lines on your environment then you will use the voip dial peer between cucm and gateway or cucm and cube right on the particular lan side we can say on the wan side you will create the port style peer where that particular interface is connected with the pstn provide now you can say description it is incoming dial peer and 1 plus 10 digits to level 3 so let's say what is written it's saying destination pattern then we have this caret sign 1 229 .2 229 .2 .2 .2 and dot 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 that means 3 3 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 so i told you like in the in the wild cards this caret means if we are putting this caret that means it will match it will match the first digit as this one if it is under this bracket sign that is this one 1 to 9 it will not match anything between 1 to 9 if it is outside this one if like this one it will match it will match this first thing that is it will match the first number if you are not using this one then it will not match with this one like it will not forward this explicitly defined if you want to forward this explicitly defined number this one here as well then you need to use that command forward digits all if you are not using that one then you need to use this caret command then we have this as you know 2 to 9 any number between 2 to 9 then dot dot that means any number between 0 to 9 then again 2 to 9 and then dot 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 means numbers between 0 to 9 then we have this session protocol sip v2 and session target sip server here you can even mention your ip address of your sip server as well it is written sip server here only this i just actually copied this from my notepad so on that we should mention the sip server ip address as well so if we are mentioning sip server address on our gateway like this one sip server 10.1.1.1 that means we can use here as well session target sip server if you want to use this ip 10.1.1.1 then you can use it here as well incoming to call number dot t that means it will accept everything voice class codec 1 that means what all are the codecs mentioned it will work here voice class sip early offer forced that means it will send its media capabilities in the initial invite if you are not sure about this early offer force or the media capabilities in the sdp you can go and check out my video on the sip session initiation protocol i have mentioned everything in that particular video that is like starting from the early offer delayed offer early media sip request sip response sip traces even even we can say uh, i have mentioned about the uh, particular examples as well particular scenarios as well so you can go and check out my that video on the sip protocol as well. i will mention the link in the uh, i button as well here and then we have this dtmf relay rtp nt that means whether you are we are using the uh, out of band signaling or in band signaling that we can mention it here ttmf in the ttmf relay and then you can use forward digits all forward digits 5 forward digits 7 i will show you in the next slide that particular forward digits then we have these like 
uh, example, this is our CUCM. This is our cube and this is our PSTN provider that is ITSP, which is uh, like allowing the SIP calls, which is working on the SIP. That's why we have written it here as ITSP SIP trunk. So this is your LAN dial peer. This is your WAN dial peer. And we will create two dial peers on this one and two on this one. Like I'm just giving an example for two dial peers. We can create as many as you want. So it's saying inbound dial peer and the outbound LAN dial peer on this G0 slash zero port. So inbound LAN dial peer means if something is coming from CUCM to this particular interface, that means that will be a inbound like inbound dial peer for this cube. And if you are sending something from cube to CUCM, that means it will hit this particular outbound LAN dial peer because you are sending from cube to CUCM. Now, if you are sending something from cube to PSTN, that will be an outbound WAN dial peer. And if you are receiving something from PSTN to cube on this particular port G0 slash one, that would be an inbound WAN dial peer. Now, let's discuss about this one. So it's saying dial peer voice 100 VoIP. So we are creating this inbound LAN dial peer on this port that is G0 slash zero. Description, we just mentioned inbound LAN dial peer from CUCM to cube, from CUCM to cube. So for cube, that is an inbound call, inbound dial peer. That is, that will be an inbound call if something is coming from CUCM to cube. So it is just mentioned session protocol SIP V2. We are creating VoIP because we are in VoIP environment. We will create here VoIP as well because our PSTN is also supporting that particular SIP trunk. SIP, we can say SIP protocol. That's why we will create the VoIP here as well. Otherwise, if it is supporting the PRI, like our PRI is, PRI is terminated, terminated, then we will use the port style peer here in the WAN dial peers. So it is just mentioned session protocol SIP version two. Then we have incoming called number 8T. We are creating inbound dial peer. That's why we are using incoming call number 8T. What 8T means, it will accept everything that starts with eight and then numbers from zero to 32, any number, any number between zero to 32. Then we have this thing that is voice class SIP bind control source interface gig zero slash zero and then voice class sip bind media source interface gig zero slash zero so why we are using this bind command so we are mainly using this bind command to use this gig zero slash zero interface as a source ip address for our signaling and media packets so we are using this command in all dial peers like this one here as well here you can see uh, in this outbound here you are we are using this one here as well here as well we are using sip bind media and control and here as well so mainly to use that particular interface as a source ip address then we have that is again the same thing that is dtmf relay rtp and te depends on you whether you are using out of band signaling or in band signaling and then codec on which codec it will work. Like if it is hitting this dial peer, then this codec will hit. That is codec G711 mu low. Now let's discuss about the outbound LAN dial peer. Outbound means if something is coming from cube to CUCM. So for cube, that will be an outbound LAN dial peer on this particular interface gig G0 slash zero. Let's just, let me just change the color to this green. Okay. So now we have this dial peer voice 101 VoIP. This one, now let me just change it again. It's not visible actually. This is a good one. Okay. So now we are creating a outbound LAN dial peer from cube to CUCM. So translation profile, if you are using, then we can just use it here as well. Main thing what we are using that is destination pattern we need to use here. Because at this particular point of time, you are sending a call that is an outbound call from cube to this particular CUC. So destination pattern plus one, four, zero, eight, nine, four, four, and then four digits, right? 
so this will be the number if something is sending from cube to cucm because cube knows plus one four four zero eight nine four four i know it is common for everyone then we have four digits and then it will just write uh, send it out to the numbers which will be mentioned then we have session protocol sip v2 and then session target ipv4 as the your cucm ip address because it is sending the call to this particular session target then we have same thing that is VoIP, uh, voice class voice class sip bind control and media source interface on this particular gig 0 slash 0 so that we can use that particular interface as a source ip address again same things dtmf relay rtp nt and codec and then we have this thing that is forward digits 11 that means it is not sending this plus it is sending from one four zero eight nine four four dot 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 it is just sending the 11 digits and it will start from the last now let's discuss about the outbound when dial pair it will be on this particular interface that is gig zero slash one the same thing dial pair voice 201 voip this will be the description now we have a destination pattern that means if some if any call is coming from cucm to cube it will hit this one and if any call is going from cube to psgn it will hit this gig zero slash zero and this particular wipe dial pair on the outbound van side right and destination pattern 81229 dot dot 229 dot 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 that means number should start from it as you know here we are not using caret sign that's why we need to use this forward digits here if you want to send this eight as well then you can mention forward digits all so i i just wanted to send eight is for my internal like i just want my users to press eight first in order to make a new outbound code but our provider doesn't want to accept that call any any call which starts with eight i can say if it is a long distance call it will it will uh, it will tell you that i will accept with that starts with one that's why i am using forward digits 11 here and again session protocol sip version 2 now session target ipv4 this will be the ip address of your sip provider like this one your pstn sip provider itsp 10.1.40.11 session target again same commands voice same thing dtmf relay codex and the forward digits then we have next thing that is dial peer voice 200 voip this one again dial peer voice 200 this will be the and this will be an in uh, random number description is inbound when dial peer from provider to cube if there is any incoming call from provider to cube then it will hit this geeksly zero slash zero but that will be an inbound call for this particular cube so we have just mentioned session protocol and we have this thing that is incoming call number dot so incoming call number is dot here now what we need to do uh, again same things voice class zip bind is there voice class zip bind media and control is there dtmf relay and the codec g711 mu law is already there now let's discuss uh, let me show you a few things like uh, on my notepad which i have just written it over here like a few examples of this one as you can uh, see it here this these are the just the examples of these dial peers so you can see it is written over here dial peer voice 910 ports this will be the ports dial peer description we have given long distance dialing and destination pattern you can you you can see it here nine one and then two to nine any number and then these are the dots so we are creating long distance that means it should start with one but my uh, like i want my users to press the nine first in order to make long distance call and then one now there is no caret sign that's why i'm using forward digits 11 here so that starting from the end it will count and it will just forward the 11 digits and it will strip off this first nine and from which port it will go this is the port number and the signaling number. now the next example this one dial peer voice 91411 ports it will be an information destination pattern is same 91411 this is just a random number i just given here 
port number and then forward digits four. As you can see, forward digits four means it will just send one four one one instead of nine, starting with nine as. Then if you want to send this four one one, you can use the same thing forward digits three then. We have another thing that is for international dialing. As you can see, it is written destination pattern nine zero one one and T. But you don't want your nine to send it on the PSTN. What you will do, you will not use forward digits all. You are not even using that caret sign. You are using now prefix because it will send T only if you are not using forward or the caret sign. It will strip off nine zero one one. That's why we are using a prefix zero one one. If once it will send this number that is uh, contains that will be under T, it will prefix with zero one one. Then we have this that is nine one one an emergency destination pattern as you can see nine one one. You should forward all digits. That means forward digit three. Even you can use forward digits all here as well. We have next that is sometimes user will dial with the nine uh, as an uh outside call and then 911 we need to create we need to configure in that way as well and again we are forwarding digits three here we cannot use forward digits all but here we can use forward digits all so here we are using forward digits three so it will send 911 next that is for the local 9229 and then this is the six seven digits number now it is saying forward digit seven. It means it is stripping of this nine and sending these seven digits. Now let's discuss about the VoIP dial pair. So VoIP here you can see uh, dial pair voice hundred VoIP description. We can like ignore these things. Let's discuss about this destination pattern, the caret sign, and then this one. Then uh, you have brackets dot dot brackets the range mainly. So now your caret is there. Now you know you don't need to mention the forward digits here because this caret sign means start with this digit and send it. That's why we are not using forward all here. Forward digits actually here or forward digits five, seven, nine. We are not using it. Again, we are using session target, session target SIP server. And then we have this incoming call number as well. Like it that means it will accept everything. Again, voice class codec, SIP early offer, whether it needs to send early offer or not, voice class codec one, that means all the codecs it needs to use. DTMF relay RTP and that means whether it is going to use out of band or in band signaling. Let me show you where this SIP server is defined. Let me just search it out. SIP server. Here you can see. We have mentioned SIP user authentication. Authentication, this will be the username and retry invite by cancel register. And then we just mentioned the IP address of our SIP server. That is this one, 4.28.251.20. So that's why we are not using here as an IP address. We can just mention SIP server. You can use the IP address actually here as well, but you can use this SIP server just a name as well. Again, these also are the same. The local, it starts caret sign. That means it starts with this number. It is not under these brackets. That's why it is like accepting or allowing everything. Again, in this international calls, caret sign, that means 011 NT. There is no need for the prefix and the forward digits. Again, session target SIP server, voice class codec, all the same thing. And then we have again these things destination, but we can even create it in this way as well. No number just starts with this number and then dot 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 start with this number and then dot dot dot. I hope uh, you have like learned something from this video. So th this ends our uh, dial peer topic. If you have any issues, any like any comments, please, please let me know in the comment section. Any queries, just let me know in the comment section and I will surely be able to help you out with all your queries. It can like there can be a delay for some time in replying those comments, but I will surely reply it. But please let me know in the comment section. I hope you, you have learned many things from this dial PS video. So please like, share and subscribe my channel for all the upcoming videos. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will receive notifications of all my upcoming videos.
थैंक यू